All right, today we are going to do muscle energy for a posteriorly rotated anominate. I've already diagnosed my patient with a posterior anominate on the left, and now I'm gonna ask for permission to treat her. Is it okay if I treat you for this? All right, sounds good. So the first thing I'm gonna have her do is I'm gonna have her scoot all the way to the edge of the table. My hip will be up against the table as well as her to stabilize her and make sure she doesn't fall off. But I'm going to make sure that I allow for movement of her left anominate so that we can perform this technique. My opposite hand is going to be against her ASIS to further stabilize her. So what I'll have her do is I'm gonna relax her leg over off the side of the table and ensuring that I have a vector that goes towards her anominate. And then using principles of muscle energy, I am going to move her to her restrictive barrier, which is in an anterior restriction. And then feel the barrier. And then what I'll have her do now is she's going to apply a force against my hand towards the ceiling using the, all right, one, two, three, and relax, two, three. And then I'm gonna put her to her new barrier. Then I will have her push against my hand one, two, three, relax, two, three, and then push her to her new barrier, and then push against my hand one more time, one, two, three, and then relax, two, three. I would do one more final passive stretch, and then I would bring her leg up over back to neutral on the table, and then reassess. Now, if we were going to use a technique in order to treat a superior pubic symphysis shear on the left, we would have similar positioning, but instead I would move her hips a little bit towards the center of the table so that she's not all the way on the edge. I would still use my hip to make sure that she was stabilized and didn't come off the table. And I would still use this hand on her opposite ASIS in order to stabilize her. But now we are stabilizing the SI joint on the left side and ensuring that we have motion to the pubic symphysis. So what I'll have her do is I would again bring her leg off of the table and then I would ensure that my vector was towards her pubic symphysis and then I would put her against her restrictive barrier and then I would again have her push against my hand one two three and then relax two three bring her to her new barrier and then push against my hand one two three and then relax two three and then new barrier, and then one more time. One, two, three, and then relax. Two, three, and then one final passive stretch. And again, I would, I would bring her leg up into neutral and then reassess. All right, so for this video, we're gonna utilize muscle energy in order to treat an anteriorly rotated anominate. So what I'll do first is I'll ask permission from my patient. Is it okay if I go ahead and treat you? All right, perfect. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and lift her leg up and then put it against my axilla. And I'm going to move her towards her restrictive barrier, which is a posterior rotation. And then using the principles of muscle energy, I would have her push against me. Go ahead, one, two, three, relax, two, three, and then go to the new barrier. Go ahead and push against me, one, two, three, and then relax, two, three, and then move her to her new barrier. And then go ahead and push against me one more time. One, two, three, and then relax. Two, three, and I would do one final passive stretch. And then I would move her leg back down to neutral and then reassess. Now we can use a very similar positioning for a inferior pubic shear. But what I would do this time is I would, is it okay if I place my hand near your bottom? All right. I would use my fist to stabilize her SI joint by placing it on the ischial tuberosity guard box. And then I would still lift her leg up and I would apply my vector so that it was going more towards the pubic symphysis. And then I would still have her push against me again. One, two, three, relax. And then move her towards her new restricted barrier and then push against me again. One, two, three, relax. Two, three, and then new barrier. And then one more time push against me, one, two, three, and then relax, two, three, and then one final passive stretch, and then I would return her back to neutral, and then reassess. So for this 
video, we are going to utilize respiratory assist in order to treat an innominant upslip. So the first thing I'm gonna do is ask my patient for permission. Is it okay if I go ahead and treat you? All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my hand and place it underneath her foot close to the calcaneus in order to stabilize it. And then for my top hand, I'm gonna place it on top of the distal tibia to get good contact. And then I'm gonna apply small traction as I internally rotate her hip in order to stabilize the femoral head against the acetabulum. And then I'm gonna AV duct her leg about five to 10 degrees in order to direct our forces towards the anomaly. So what I'll have her do is have a, take a deep breath in. And here, her anomaly is moving superiorly. And then as she breathes, and I'm resisting it, and as she breathes out, it moves inferiorly and I engage that. Go ahead and breathe in. And as her nominate moves superiorly, resist, and as she breathes out, I'll encourage it to move inferiorly. And then one more time, breathe in. And I'll resist the superior movement. And then breathe out. And then I would encourage the inferior movement. And then I would return her to neutral and then reassess. Right. So for this video, we're gonna utilize muscle energy to treat a left out flare dysfunction. So the first thing I'll have my patient do, do I have your permission to treat you? All right, so go ahead and bend both your knees and lift your hips up to the ceiling for me and relax them down and then I will move her legs down. And then what I'll have her do is since it is a left dysfunction, I'll have her put her foot on the other side of her knee like this. And then I'm gonna place my hand along your backside near your PSIS, is it okay? If I, all right, so I'll roll her and then I'll contact her PSIS with this hand. All right, and then roll her back towards me. And then what I'll have her do now is she will apply a force against this hand. All right, go ahead and push against me. One, two, three, and then relax. Two, three, and then I'll put her against her new restrictive barrier. Go ahead and push against my hand. One, two, three, relax, two, three, and then new restrictive barrier. And then push against my hand one more time. One, two, three, and then relax. Two, three, and then I'll do one final passive stretch. And then I will place her leg back in neutral, and then I would reassess. All right, and so if I was going to treat a dysfunction on the opposite side, which be a right in flare, what I'll have her do is I would bend her leg and then put it across this way except this time I'm going to let her leg externally rotate and then I'm gonna have her apply a force against this hand. Go ahead and push against my hand. One, two, three, and then relax. Two, three, and then your restrictive barrier. Go ahead and push against my hand. One, two, three, and then relax. Two, three, new restrictive barrier, and then push against my hand one more time. One, two, three, and then relax, two, three, and then one final passive stretch. And then I would return her leg to neutral and then reassess. All right, so for this, we're gonna utilize muscle energy in order to fix a compressed pubic symphysis. So first thing I'll do is ask for permission. Is it okay if I go ahead and treat you? All right, so what I will do is I will go ahead and lift her knees up. And then I'm going to place my hand between her legs and what I want her to do is go ahead and don't do it right now but I'm gonna have you bring your knees together okay all right so go ahead and press your knees against my fist one two three and then relax and then I would add more space by putting my hand against her knee and then my other hand against her knee so go ahead and push one two three and then relax two, three, and then I would go ahead and place my elbow. Go ahead and push against one, two, three, relax, two, three, and then I would add my hand in order to go to the new restrictive barrier. Go ahead and press against me, one, two, three, and then relax, two, three. I would do one final passive stretch, and then I would return the patient to neutral, and then I would reassess. Now, if we were to do the opposite dysfunction with the pubic symphysis in a gapped dysfunction, I would bring her knees back up and then I'll approximate her knees slightly apart. 
And then what I'll have her do is she is going to push against my hand with, and push against my body with her knees for three seconds. One, two, three, and then relax. And then I'll have her push against me again. One, two, three, relax. And then I'll approximate closer. Push against the hand. One, two, three, and then relax. Two, three, and then I'll approximate her knees close together and then have her try and open. One, two, three, and then relax. Two, three. And then I would return her to neutral and then I would reassess.